So, you want to be a demon hunter. Well, let me tell you, it's not going to be easy. Only the most insane, vengeful elves in all of Azeroth will choose to walk this path. The lore surrounding this dark art is by far the darkest lore that has ever existed in the Warcraft universe. This makes Death Knights look like they're playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure over there. A lot of the lore I'll be covering comes from the Illidan book, which is by far the darkest Warcraft book that has ever been released, and also one of the most well-written. But first, we must ask the question, why would you even want to become a demon hunter? For most that walk this path, the Legion has taken everything from them. The demons have broken their families and left their homes in ruin. They are an intergalactic swarm of death and destruction that knows no mercy. For Blood Elves, their home was wiped out by the Scourge, a creation of the Legion that wreaked the same havoc on their lands. During the Third War, the forces of Azeroth fought back against the Legion, but an elf named Ilden had a unique approach to combat. He absorbed the fell magic, transforming himself into the very thing he swore to destroy and use their own might against them. Behold the flames of Azeroth! You know nothing of power! <laughs> This is too easy. The radical lengths Illidan went to defeat the Legion were controversial, but some elves were left inspired by his tenacity. No form of combat would even hold a flame to the carnage Illidan committed with his demonic powers. Later on, Illidan would venture to the Outlands to amass his own army of demons to defeat the demons, and many Calderai and Cinderai ventured into this dangerous land to learn how to wield fell magic as he does. I guess other races can be demon hunters, but there really has been no history of such. There was mention of a human demon hunter in the Alliance and Horde Compendium, but this is a very outdated book that probably isn't canon. And let me just make this incredibly clear. Uh, the elves seeking out Illidan are all insane. In order to get to the Black Temple, they have to venture through some of Warcraft's most hostile environments, filled with fell orcs, fell reavers, demons, and hundreds of other things trying to kill you. In the Illidan book, it explains how Zangermarsh is filled with toxic gas and poisonous insects that will sting you and then grubs will wiggle out of your eyes and skin. Oh, hell no! Also, you have to watch out for wardens, a specialized military force of assassins and jailers of Night Elf society who deem Ilden and his use of demonic powers as an abomination. And they hunt down anyone following a similar dark path of harnessing fell magic no matter what their intentions are. Now, the Blood Elves that want to become Demon Hunters have it a bit easier. Most of, if not all of them, are followers of Kael'thas Sunstrider, who's one of Illidan's closest allies, so they probably didn't have to wander through Outlands trying to find him. Suffice to say, getting to Illidan's fortress called the Black Temple is a challenge in itself, and we haven't even started the process of becoming a Demon Hunter yet. If you actually survive getting to the temple, you'll be met with elves insane as you are. In the lower quarters of the temple, there are refugee dens filled with elves, some screaming in insanity and others shrieking in despair. In the book, some of these psychotic characters include a night elf whose face is half burned and caved in from an infernal, another who maniacally laughs at literally everything, and probably the most brutal is a night elf whose kids were burnt by the legion and now straps a charred husk of her child against her at all times. One night, she was screaming over and over again about the burning, and a blood elf tried to silence her. She killed him. This game is rated T for Teen. If you arrive and haven't been killed by the other refugees, you'll finally start your training, which is just as, if not more dangerous, than the venture to get here. 
one in five elves will survive this transformation. The rest will die in a multitude of ways I'll explain soon. First, our training starts off pretty tame. You'll learn about demons, the methods of infiltration, and the basic wielding of weapons. And throughout this training process, demon hunters develop a weird sort of companionship as they're all filled with rage, grief, and they're all a little bit insane. But the next portion of training will truly test their fortitude. An aspiring hunter must perform a ritual where they must fight a demon one on one. Most often, the demon they must slay is the very type that killed their family making the bloody duel even more grim. After defeating the demon in one-on-one -on -one combat, now you must perform the most sickening act in the transformation process. One must cut out the heart of the demon and consume it. You feel the burning heat from the fell magic radiating down your throat. You feel its power kicking in your stomach. Your mind will go blank and endless torrents of the Legion's destruction will devour your consciousness. You will witness countless worlds cleaved in twain, countless lives dragged into endless suffering, and countless swarms of demons enacting the Legion's will. All the realities, all the futures crushed under the heel of inevitable fell might. You will be forced to witness the moment of grief that compelled you to become a demon hunter over and over again. Experiencing grief, rage, and insanity for an endless eternity. And the worst part of it all is... Oh no, it can't be, it's... <gasps> This video is sponsored by Empires and Puzzles, an amazing, free-to-play, match-three RPG game that is easy to learn, but hard to master. You see, in this fantasy universe, you will travel across faraway lands and match the color of shields in a very epic, strategic, and visually stunning fashion. There are over 400 heroes you can collect. New heroes are released monthly, but my personal favorite is Bao Chan, because of how chubby his little cheeks are. And you can level up and build out all of these characters' talent trees and compete with them in PvP leaderboards to test your skills. There are continuous updates like weekly events, themed challenges, and much more. Most recently, there's the Season of Love event, which features new heroes, stages, and difficulty modes. So what are you waiting for? Check out my link in the description and get in on the most epic match three game of all time that you can find on iOS and Android. Empires and puzzles. Okay, back to the endless pain and suffering you will experience eating a demon heart. The absolute pain and misery demon hunters experience on their demon heart induced torment causes them to rip out their own eyes in insanity. What's left of the demon hunter is a broken, tortured husk of who they once were. Now they observe the world around them with a spectral sight, letting them sense the essence of demons around them because of the practical stuff about magic, I don't know. Not only that, but they must wrestle with the demon they now have inside of them. It will taunt them, telling them to give into rage and fully envelop themselves with demonic energy. In an ironic twist of fate, it is the demon that they consumed that may consume them. What's next in the process is to imprison the demon within. Initiates are bound to an operation table and intricate magical arcane tattoos are carved into their flesh with the specific purpose to bind the demon within them, making it easier to harness its strength. Over the next period of time, an initiate's body will slowly transform. Horns will sprout from their head, claws will emerge on their hands and feet, pronounced fangs will fill their mouth, and hardened scales will sprout from their skin. Some initiates will not be able to handle the transformation process, realizing that they are turning into the very thing they swore to destroy. Others will not have the fortitude to keep the demon bound within them, causing them to lose all of their sanity and go into a murderous rampage until they are slain by the other hunters.
but the small percentage of demon hunters that do learn to harness these new powers will become Warcraft's most effective weapon in defeating the Legion. They have seen the power their demonic enemy wields, and they know the only way to truly defeat them is to wield the very power that they harness. Now a demon that a demon hunter chooses to consume does have different effects on their appearance and powers. So a hunter who consumes a Felguard will look and fight differently than one who consumes a Succubus. But unfortunately, we don't really see these different effects in game. Most demon hunters continued to live in the Black Temple and work with Lord Illidan to control all of Outlands until the events of the Burning Crusade. During the expansion, the champions of Azeroth assaulted the temple because, well, Illidan was attacking the Horde and the Alliance there, enslaving the broken Draenei, and his allies are sucking out all of the water out of the planet and attacking Shatrath. So, he's less of an anti-hero and more of just an actual villain, even if it's all in the name of defeating the Legion. Anyways, a special force of demon hunters are sent to a Legion world called Mardum to collect a relic called the Sargerite Keystone, which allows the user to teleport to any world. Players go to retrieve this keystone and teleport back to the Black Temple to realize Illidan has been defeated, and the Wardens imprison all of the demon hunters and store them in the Vault of the Wardens. They don't kill the demon hunters because they see them less as people and more as weapons that they can store for safekeeping just in case. Years later, during the Legion expansion, the Legion has invaded Azeroth once again, and the Demon Hunters are broken free by their jailers to fight the Legion. And you probably know during the expansion that, uh, yeah, we kind of defeat the Legion for seemingly ever. Not only that, Illidan, their leader, kind of just disappears into space, so they don't really have any sort of guidance. So, for most Demon Hunters, it's like... Now what? Now they're just tormented monster people who sacrifice all of their humanity with no real purpose. Like, yeah, I bet there are random demons still hanging out across the universe, but their problem is pretty much solved. So what are they doing now? I can't imagine a demon hunter just becoming like a fisherman or a world-renowned chef. Like most new additions to Warcraft's lore during an expansion, they are promptly ignored by the time the next expansion rolls around. So we're kind of just left in the dark on what they're actually up to. But, you know, after seeing all the well-written Dragonflight side quests that tackle forgotten about lore subjects like this, I'd love to see this done for a demon hunter at some point. After covering the insane lengths it takes to become a demon hunter, I think it's safe to say that demon hunters are the edgiest class in all of WoW. I mean, yeah. Death Knights are edgy too, but what makes Demon Hunters a step above is that they are willing participants in becoming a monster. They choose to seek out the Stark Path by their own free will and are insane enough to carry it out in the name of revenge. For Death Knights, they were just raised to become zombies against their will, which I think makes them much less cool. Also, I main a Demon Hunter, so uh, I'm a bit biased. Thanks again to Empires and Puzzles for sponsoring this video. You can click the link down below to get started.